Hi friends, today we are going to make this wonderful Japanese dessert called dango. Dango is a mochi or rice cake on, um, shaped into balls put onto a skewer type stick that um, we usually eat for snacks because I usually pick it up for my son before I pick him up and uh, it's a really easy snack. It's slightly sweet, very chewy, it's not salty. It's actually one of my favorite snacks as well. So if you want to learn how to make this, keep watching. The things that you will need, a pair of chopsticks. These are takeaway chopsticks that are quite thin. I wanted it to be something that didn't have quite a sharp point. So I this, this one works great. You will also need a four millimeter crochet hook as well as a stitch marker, a pair of amigurumi eyes, but this time I'm using a smaller pair. These are black amigurumi eyes, six millimeters, so they're quite small. And you will also need yarn in these three colors. So I'm using a pink one, a white one, and a green one. This is Yarn Art Jean Plus. You can find them at hopiumyarns.com and has been the main, main yarn that I've been using for this season one series. Perfect for beginner amigurumi. Uh, and it doesn't split and it works up really fast because of the thickness of it. So it's really great. So you will need some black yarn. I mean, I'm also using yarn RG plus in this. So let's go ahead and get started. All three colors are worked up the same. So I will show you how to do one and then you will have to go ahead and make it in all three colors. So I'm going to use green today for or right now. <laughs> Grab your stitch marker as well as your crochet hook. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to make a magic ring of six. So go ahead and make six single crochets into the magic ring. Now, normally I would have you pull this really tight so that there's no hole here, but I would like you to just pull it just a little bit so that there is a hole, but not too big, just like that, because we need to stick the chopstick through. So go ahead for round two, we're going to increase every stitch. You'll have a total of 12 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, round three, we will single crochet and increase after that. We're going to repeat that six times for a total of 18 stitches. Okay friends, now what we're going to do is for round four, we're going to do two single crochets and then increase. And then um, you will have a total of 24 stitches at the end. So you have one single crochet and then you do another single crochet in the next stitch and then you increase in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that six times.
So now what we're going to do is for round five through five through seven, we are going to just single crochet around. So you're just going to place one single crochet in every stitch. So that's five, six, and seven. So that's three rounds. So go ahead and do that and we'll embroider the face. Okay friends, I have just finished my third round of single crochet. I'm just um, pulling out the um, loop so that it will not frog or unravel. So we're going to do the face right now. And now what we need to do is to grab our um, black yarn as well as our eyes. So I like to do the smile first because I always think it's easier to place the eyes after I've placed a smile. So go ahead and put it onto a very thin and sharp sewing needle because this helps to embroider very seamlessly, especially with yarn that is so thick. So what I like to do is to go to the opposite side of where my stitch marker is, it's just a preference. And on round five, we are going to embroider a smile that's just one stitch wide. So you can see here that this is where we had our increase and then we had single crochet around on round five. So I just look for the one that is all single crochets like this. And what we'll do is, let me make sure that I'm on camera really well. So I like to just um, go through on round five. I'm going to mimic the stitch right here by going under right where that point is and coming out of where that stitch is because I just want it to be one stitch wide. I think it looks really cute when it's like just a cute little smile. So I'm coming back out with my needle like this and this is where the point comes in handy as you saw in previous previous episodes. I like to go right into the middle of this yarn so that it doesn't have a gap when you if you put it like right here you will see a duck duck like that. So I like to go right in between the yarn like this. Can you see can you see that? And I like to just pierce it through and very, very, very gently because it's easy for it to get snagged. You come out through the inside and pull it gently. And then you can see that there is no visible um, separation of that smile. And go ahead and 
um, secure it in your your favorite way. I will just knot it for time purposes. Double knot, but you know you should definitely secure it uh, if you're using this for a gift or anything like that. And then for the eyes, I like to put the eyes in in between rounds six and seven, which is just you know just right above the smile, one stitch away from the smile. So as you can see, the smile is right here, and then I will just go one stitch away right there so you can see it's just one stitch away and then same with this smile I will just go just one stitch away right there and if you're happy with that go ahead and add the backing so that it's secure now these can be a little tricky because six millimeters is quite small and it is a little bit finicky to do but you can do it now I wanted to show you some different options as you saw in previous videos I showed you how to add blusher to um, using actual makeup and the clear glue clear craft glue and I'll have a video up here somewhere to show you again but um, with these I like to use these little brads now this is not for children okay so this is only for if you're making it for like an, somebody old enough not to have a choking hazard but um, there are these b uh, brads that my friend May gave me from Amigurumi and I just I really love them so what you should do and I'm not doing it right now because uh, I don't want to get glue all over my fabric here but normally you should put some some glue here and then you can stick these wherever you like and it will stay so as you can see I've done it on the white one over here so once um, you have glue on there and then I like to you know separate the brads up like if you can see I get like to separate it up so you should definitely put glue in here so that is more secure not for children please okay so use your discretion so you can just add them right next to the eyes and I think they look super cute because the pink and the green I tried to put some blusher on it just to see how it'll work and it, you know it's not bad if you're using a darker blush color however if you know this is a different option too you could also crochet it as well okay so now that we have this done we are going to start our decreases so go ahead and put this loop back on your hook and we're going to start round eight in round eight we will single crochet two so that's my first one and single crochet in the next so that's two single crochets and then we will decrease so i'm using the invisible decrease as i always do and we're going to repeat the sequence six times for a total of 18 stitches. So go ahead and do that. Now for round nine, we will single crochet and then decrease in the next stitch. You're going to repeat this six times for a total of 12 stitches. So let's do that. And then we will be ready to stuff. So go ahead and do that. Normally, I would stuff when it's uh, the previous round when we had two single crochets, but oh, it's uh, this yarn is so, so, so fun and so big that you actually, <laughs> you can do it now because uh, there's still 
there's still a, quite a big of a hole because this yarn is so thick. So now we're going to go ahead and stuff. So go ahead and make sure that this loop is out so that it doesn't unravel or frog, which is the yarny term for unraveling. And gently go ahead and stuff it. And you want it to be, you know, firm, but not overstuffed, if that makes sense so that it holds its shape well. And then just like this. So I got this stuffing also from Hobium Yarns and it is, I, I really like the stuffing because this is, um, I usually use the stuffing that is not in balls like this. It's usually just one big cloud, but I really like the this round, um, I don't know what this kind is called where it's just a bunch because it actually gets into the nooks and crannies really well and holds its shape. So I think I'll start um, using this from now on. So mine is pretty stuffed. It looks really great. And then you can manipulate the yarn by, you know, um, holding it down and shaping it with your fingers. So, okay, let's go ahead and finish this up. For the last round, round 10, we will decrease all around and then we'll just fasten off. That's it. It's a quick little pattern, super easy. So go ahead and decrease all, all around. You should have six stitches left and then we'll weave all in our ends. So that's my first decrease. Oops, excuse me. Second decrease. Third decrease. Fourth decrease, fifth, and sixth. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off a, you know, a medium-ish tail. And we're going to um, close that up, weave in our ends, but we don't want to make it too, 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 too tight at the top so that we have room for the chopstick to go through. So go ahead and um, go through each of these loops just like this, like previous videos. So we're just going through every loop in the round just like that by going from centered out and going from the inside out. It's very easy to see because um, if you do the invisible decrease, you can you can actually see that little the bar. And it's not a bar, but the the front loop, just like that. Okay, so now you want to tug it just slightly so that you have a slight hole right there, and go ahead and weave in your ends. So I'm going to do that, and don't pull on it too hard so that you don't have um you know, like a, a dent up here and weave in your ends by going through a few stitches on different rounds. You can go in a third time by going back down here if you'd like to make it ultra secure and then bringing it out somewhere else, cutting that yarn. And it's complete. Now all you have to do is to make the same in the white and the pink. But I do wanna show you, even uh, I showed you in the onigiri video, but in case you're watching this out of order, I would love to show you how to add blusher to the white one and to um, put it all together. So hold on a second. Okay friends, I want to show you how to add um, blusher um, not the the brad kind, but the actually using makeup. So you need to grab your favorite makeup blusher. I have a peachy one here, and I also have, I bought these all on sale actually. I have another one here that's a bit more um, deeper in color. So last time I used this peachy one and it was adorable, but this time I will use this one. So all you need to do is grabbing your, uh, I have a dedicated brush that I use for um, just my amigurumi and I don't use this makeup on my face. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that blush and you can put it anywhere that you like. I'm going to just gently brush it on 
the cheeks because I think it shows up so much better on white than it did on the other colors. That's why I have it in reverse. Um, I have it on the green and the pink here, but I su strongly suggest that you just do it on the white and you know embroider or use the, use the technique that I told you before. So I'm really happy with this. You know, if you want to add some depth to it, you can use two different colors. Uh, it's really up to you. You just play around and see what you like. And I'm very happy. I think it looks cute. And now, grabbing my um, my standard clear craft craft glue, and I don't want this to budge. So basically, I'm going to dip my brush off camera not the same brush that I used on the bush um, because otherwise you'll get pigment in your in your clear glue I just used a different brush with some of the glue on there and then you slightly dab it on like this I use the other side of the brush to get the glue onto the pigment so that it will stay so this is a neat little trick that um, I use to make the blusher always um, stay of course if you wash this it will wash it away no problem you can just do it again I try to use um, non-toxic um, craft glue and now we're ready for assembly I also forgot to mention you want to dry this overnight otherwise this glue will get everywhere uh, but you know I don't I don't really have time right now so I'm just going to show you I'm putting it on the skewer had I thought this through I would have put it on the skewer first and then you could just let it dry by keeping it in a cup so now um, we're going to do it in reverse order we're going to start with the the green the white and then the pink and um, you're going to go through right through the center of the bottom and then very gently, I like to turn it. As you can see, I'm, I'm twisting it like this. And then you're going to come out through the top. Now I wanna do it very, very slowly because I'm trying my best not to get that stuffing to come out and it will, and it's okay if it does. So very gently bring it down. And then you will need your white one and hopefully yours is dry unlike mine and do the same. We're going through the bottom, twisting it, twisting it, coming out through the top right there. That's why sometimes leaving a little gap will make it so much easier. I'm going to bring it down just slightly. And then our last one, our pink one here, going through the bottom again, twisting, twisting. I think my son is going to be so excited about this because he loves dango. And let's see, it looks like I didn't make a hole at the top. Oh dear. Okay, when this happens, it's no big deal. You can just take your tapestry needle, find a hole, and you can insert and just, you know, manipulate the yarn a little bit so that the hole is a little bit bigger. And then you can also put your finger there so that you can feel where the chopstick is. And friends, look at that. We made it. This is exactly how it looks. I'm going to see today. I have to go to the supermarket after I film this before I pick up my son from school. But uh, if I can find a picture of it from um, the grocery store, I will take a picture and insert it somewhere so that you can see. But friends, how adorable is this? This is such a cute gift for friends that love Japanese food or Japanese snacks or if you have a friend a Japanese friend I'm sure their children will love this for like a kitchen play and as I said before in previous episodes that this is common common snacky food that we eat at our home including the onigiri from a previous um, previous episode as well as the matcha and I think for kitchen play for your children this would be absolutely wonderful of course if it's really really young children with ch um, choking hazard things please do not add these um, these brads here as well as this you can serve it separately is no problem and um, I, and here in Hong Kong they also have these kind of like mochis called tong 
commune, I think. Uh, I don't know the exact name because I'm not Chinese, but I do enjoy it. And they put these little balls of um, rice cakes inside of like coconut milk and things like that. And you can eat it with like little sago bubbles, like tapioca bubbles, and they add these kinds of mochis and it's so delicious. So if you have very young children, I would just take them off the stick and then just serve it in a bowl. But I hope you enjoyed that. This was um, absolutely lovely to be um, here with you for Learn Amigurumi. This is our last episode for season one. I'm brainstorming for season two with my friends at Hobie and Yarns. If you enjoyed this series and really, really liked it, I would love if you subscribe to my channel at Annie Gurumi. Big thank you to my sponsors at Hobium Yarns who are not only wonderful people to work with, but they are also very good friends of mine. They have a variety of yarns and if you're looking for amigurumi stuff, please follow this uh, this channel so that way you can see more amigurumi like this. And um, let's, if you have any suggestions, please let me know <laughs> in the comment box below. If you're watching this on Hobium Yarns um, YouTube channel, I don't get notifications for those comments. So please also leave them in my personal YouTube so that I can see them as well. I've learned so much in these 10 episodes and I hope that season two will be even better. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.